Hello, my YouTube friends. Maybe you didn't know this, but you can live stream PS4 games and soon the PS5 as well easily without a capture card. This makes becoming a game streamer super easy. And today I'm going to show you how to use it using OBS Studio. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. If you've always wanted to live stream games but didn't want to spend all kinds of cash on capture cards or expensive PC hardware, this is definitely the solution for you. The first thing we want to do is configure our PS4 to do this. So you just start it up and log in. Then you're going to go up into the settings first setting we're going to go to is remote play connection settings here you want to just make sure to enable remote play then you can back out of there and we're going to go to account management in account management you just want to go to activate as your primary ps4 and make sure that the ps4 you're currently using is your primary the last setting we're going to go to is the power save settings then we want to go to set features available in rest mode you want to make sure to check stay connected to the internet and enable turning on the PS4 from the network. We start out here on the PlayStation US Remote Play website. The links are in the description to all this stuff, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. All you have to do is scroll down a little bit. It's going to show you that you can get this on your iPhone or your Android phone, Windows or Mac. I'm going to download the Windows version. So I just click on this get on Windows 10 and then I'm going to select Windows PC users and it brings you up to this page and all I have to do is scroll down a little bit, agree to this little agreement here and then click the PC Windows button and it downloads it. Now I could just click here when it's finished downloading or I can go into my downloads area and then I can just double click on it. And all you have to do is click OK and it's going to install. It's very quick. It's not a very large program. And once you're done, click Next and then Next and then Install. And then you can click Finish and it'll automatically launch for you. Now when you first launch PS Remote Play, it may ask you for a login. And this of course is your PlayStation Network login. If you put in the correct login and you get an error that says it doesn't recognize it or it can't reach it or something like that, you're going to want to go to Sony's website and log in there with your PlayStation Network login. In that particular case, sometimes there's just an agreement they want you to check or something like that. If you go in and you log into the PlayStation Network on your computer and then you come back to PS Remote Play, it will log in just fine. And once you're logged in, you can change some of these settings. I'm going to click this little gear. You can see I'm signed out. Text entry, I can use the keyboard. Here for the video quality for remote play, you're going to want to go ahead and it has both PS5 and PS4 in here already. You can bump these up to the highest. And you can see right here, the 1080 is only available for the PS5 and the PS4 Pro. So if you don't have a Pro, just be aware you're going to only get 720. That is what it is. You can click OK on that little warning message. And then you could set your frame rate, let you specify so it's either standard or high. And for information, it's pretty standard stuff. So once you're done with this, you can just click OK. And if it's the first time you're setting this up, it won't automatically have your PlayStation in here like it does for me. I'm going to click the little controller button and here it tells you that you can use it wirelessly if you have Bluetooth on your computer. I don't. I plug it in with a cable. It's really simple. You just plug it in to any of the USB ports and you're all set. Now the first time you set this up, you're probably going to hit the button and it will search for your console. And if you set everything up right as we did previously, you won't have any problems. But of course, as you can see the web page right behind where we're setting up the remote play, it does have all the information that you might need in case you need to set it up or it doesn't connect automatically. Most likely it will. And once it's set up and connected, all you have to do is click the name of your PS4 right here. Now it's going to search for your PS4 across the network. And when it finds it, you're going to hear the little beep of your PS4 turning on and it'll tell you it's connected to your PS4. 
And after a few moments, you're going to see your PlayStation 4 screen pop right up here on your computer. And depending upon how you have your audio set up, you should also hear it through your PC speakers, which is pretty friggin' awesome. Now that we have our PS4 open, you're just going to wanna hit this little expand button down in the bottom right hand corner. It's gonna maximize your screen. This is particularly useful if you only have one monitor on your computer. Personally, I'd recommend using multiple monitors. It makes it a heck of a lot easier. But if you only have one monitor and you wanna maximize it, then you're going to click Alt Tab and you're going to go to your OBS, which you should already have open. Now we're going to set up a scene and you can see I created an empty scene down here called main game. I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to window capture and I'm going to call this window capture game and click OK. Then I'm going to drop the window down and select PS remote play. And there we go. Now our PS4 is being shown in our OBS. Now there is another way to do this. If you have multiple screens, you can maximize the PS4 screen on one of your monitors and then use display capture and capture that monitor. That is another way to do it. And in my opinion, it's a heck of a lot easier to stream games when you have a second monitor and you can be looking directly at the monitor that's broadcasting the actual physical PS4 screen. But if you have to do it like this, you're going to be watching a smaller screen when you play, but it is doable and it totally works. Now that our game is in our screen, we want to go ahead and make sure that we add the audio. So to do that under sources, we're going to click this plus button and we're going to go to audio output capture. Now we're going to capture the location where the audio is going to be played through. The best location to have your audio played through is probably going to be headphones. The reason why you want to have it be your headphones is because you don't want your audio to play through your speakers and then go into your microphone. If you do that, you're going to have a lot of echo and it's just gonna sound horrible. So generally speaking, you wanna be doing all of this with your audio playing through your headphones. And if you have it set up that way, then right here, when you drop down device, you're going to select your headphones. In my case, I don't have headphones in since this is just a demo. So I'm going to select speakers, which is where my audio is playing through. Then I'm gonna click OK. And you can see under game audio, it's picking up all of the audio from this overlay and playing it to my live stream, which I'm not connected to yet. Now I'm going to click this plus and I'm going to go to image. Next, I wanna put an overlay on the screen. And I already have one in here, so I'm gonna add existing and I'm gonna go to overlay and I'm gonna click okay. And you can see this is a little smaller than the standard size of my canvas. So I'm going to right click on it. We're gonna go into properties. And just so you can see, this is just a standard PNG image, nothing fancy. If you're interested in how to easily obtain overlays just like this one, that you can customize all kinds of different ways. I use Placeit. There's a link at the top of the screen for you to go and check out a video that shows you how to create overlays just like this using Placeit. It's freaking awesome. I highly recommend it. Moving on. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the overlay and select transform. Then I'm going to fit it to the screen so it is the full size of my screen. Next, I'm going to show you how I added a camera. And in this case, I wanted to use a camera that already has a frame. In order to do that, I already set up a scene that has my camera frame layout already set up. And there you can see it when I switch to that scene. And as you can see, I already have it set up using the move transition so I can move this frame all around the screen. And using this sort of sequence as a nested scene is really easy to add to our full gaming scene. All I have to do is go to main game and then I click this plus down under sources and I'm going to go to scene. Now I'm going to select the scene with the frame that I already set up and you can see it puts it right down in the bottom lower left and it maintains all of the plugins and everything else that I've already added to it. So it's awesome. You can also see that it's added my microphone. Now up at the top of this overlay, you see I have a latest subscriber and a top donation and a little location for those to be displayed. So this would be the location where you would want to put in any kind of widgets that you have. And if you are interested in learning how to create widgets, there's a link at the top of the screen so you can check that video out as well. Moving along, let's say you wanted to add a second camera to your live stream so that you could show your hand movements on the keyboard or a control pad. Well, you can just click the plus button, go to video capture device, and I'm gonna call this one desk and click okay. Now I can drop down my device and select my camera 
and I can set it up custom so it's the size that I want and I can see that it's a little bit on the bright side so I'm gonna select this configure video button and I'm gonna go in here and mess around a little bit with the camera controls first I want to make sure my focus is set I don't want it readjusting the focus all the time and I can adjust my exposure and if I go over here I can adjust the brightness contrast hue saturation and all kinds of other aspects of the image just so that I can make sure that it's going to be as good for the viewer as it can possibly get. It's always better to set up your lighting properly instead of trying to go in here and fiddle with these settings, but we don't all have perfect lighting, so sometimes we just have to make do and go in here and play around with the camera settings to try to get it as best as we can. So I think I'm just about where I want this to actually be. Once I get those settings set up, all I have to do is click apply and then click OK. And then in the configuration window I just click OK. Now I'm going to resize this so that it's not taking up the whole screen and I'm going to move this over here and place it above this and you might notice that it's kind of not really right way up it's kind of all not right. And I'm pretty sure that my folks on the stream would like to see this the way that I see it. So I'm going to right click on the desk and I'm going to flip it horizontally. Then if I just right click on the one in the screen, I can go to transform again and I can flip it vertically. And now you can see that the audience is going to see it exactly how I do. It makes it a heck of a lot easier for them to relate to the controls as they're going on. And the last thing to do is just get to plan. Now when I get in here, you can see how responsive it is based on on the video that you see with my hands. There is not a lot of latency to this. You will notice a little tiny bit of lag on rare occasions. I'm sure a professional gamer would probably be pretty frustrated with the latency that they see. I personally am not a professional gamer. If I was, I probably wouldn't be using a PS4 rig to begin with. And I'm guessing you are probably not either. So chances are you won't notice any more lag than I do. This really does work and you can see it looks pretty doggone amazing on this. All you have to do now is set up your stream to YouTube or Twitch or wherever you want to go live to and then go ahead and start streaming. It's really that simple. Now you definitely want to use a face cam when you're live streaming games. So you should check this video out. I show you how to set up a bunch of different kinds. And if you're always looking for tools, tips and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.